Hey everyone, today we're discussing some of the worst iridescent add-ons we've had throughout DBD history. For add-ons that are meant to be the best, these are really quite bad. Let's get into it. Iridescent photo card used to have a very odd effect. Currently, it's not too bad, but that's after considerable buffs. The purpose of it is to hit a few blades, then get the survivor exposed to where they can be insta-downed. It doesn't really make sense a lot of the time, because why wouldn't you just want to use your blades instead? Currently, this can be done at two or less away from max laceration, where previously this was just one blade away. Not the best, but possible, I suppose. However, the release version just straight up destroyed the power. It had the same effect of allowing you to insta-down when one blade away from max laceration, only it had the downside of disallowing you to injure survivors with your blades. You know, your power. It basically removed the ability to injure with your power, forcing you to utilize the insta-down or choose to go M1 focused with the bat. Bizarre add-on. Death Throws Compilation is another trickster add-on. This was also just very strange on release, although with an admittedly cool concept that would have worked well as a meme add-on. Currently it gives the pretty awful effect of automatically reloading all your blades after exiting main event. On release though, this add-on would make your blades do half damage. So with there being 8 laceration bars originally, this would mean 16 blade hits for a single health state. The only way they could do more was by hitting consecutive blades without missing. Each blade hit raised the 50% up to a maximum of 200%. You might think that doesn't sound too bad, but this number would reset whenever you missed, returning it to 50%. Essentially you had to play Trickster perfectly without missing to get any value. And all of us know too well I think just how accurate Trickster is. His power is a spam power, ultimately. It's not meant for precision, so forcing this playstyle is rather odd. I do kind of like the idea, but it isn't a good add-on. All it really does is encourage you to camp too, which in my eyes just makes it even worse. Carburetor Tuning Guide was a newly made iridescent add-on after Bubba and Billy's reworks. It gave the effect of a longer possible chainsaw sweep, adding 0.5 seconds to the total time. The downsides were a longer recharge rate, and also a 4% reduction to movement speed while sweeping. It also consumed all tokens upon usage, forcing you to utilize the entirety of the sweep even if you didn't want to. It's another one of those add-ons that just kind of immediately restricts your power in some form, and weakens you by quite a lot. It gives you a full length, slower, longer recharge power pretty much nerfing you in almost every way. It's still kind of like this too, just with the slight adjustment of a 2% reduction to movement speed instead of 4%. Really barely a difference. Iridescent Unpublished Manuscript is a current add-on for the Skull Merchant. This add-on has the strange effect of allowing you to create a second terror radius. When you manually activate a drone, it emits a terror radius for 15 seconds, and that's it. It also nerfs your power by increasing the time it takes for you to manually reactivate drones by 25%. It's odd that it has a downside at all, but hey. As much as I like the concept of this add-on, it seems like it should be in a much different category, like a brown or yellow meme add-on. I've heard it can work well when playing with terror radius perks like Starstruck or Distressing, but I mean, that isn't enough of a reason to argue its strength in my opinion. The times I've used this add-on, the feedback I've had in endgame chat has been that it wasn't even noticeable as an effect. A shifting terror radius or something would work a bit better, but this just doesn't make sense to me. Once survivors realize what's up, it becomes even more worthless. It's not exactly hard to figure out, I don't think. Iridescent Brick was introduced as part of Billy's rework in year 4. This add-on gave an effect similar to its current one of making you undetectable after a short duration of chainsaw sprinting. Currently it's just 2 seconds, which is okay. The old version however was 5. Now 5 seconds is a lot longer than it sounds, and most maps don't even have the option to maintain a sprint for 5 seconds. There are a few maps I think in which it's actually impossible. I don't have much to say about this add-on, as it's pretty straightforward why it's not that good if you can barely activate it on most 
maps or instances. Even if you do activate it, your chainsaw is still very much loud. Remember that all this is doing technically is suppressing your terror radius with the undetectable effect, which is by no means a guarantee that you won't be heard. It also takes a bit of time for the effect to actually come into play as it narrows down your terror radius. Iridescent Umbrella Badge is an add-on we've discussed before, but what we haven't discussed is its far worse iterations that came before it. Currently it will make anyone who uses a vaccine suffer from the exposed status for 60 seconds. I stand by this being pretty terrible at the moment, and this is with multiple buffs. My issue with this add-on is that it activates when the survivors are away and safe from you, and happens a maximum of 4 times per game. It just doesn't seem worth it, particularly because it doesn't incorporate the use of your tentacle. In 5.2.0, this add-on had a 30 second duration, making it even worse. Then in 5.0.0, or its release date, it had a 12 second duration. This is close to actually being useless, I think. 12 seconds is nothing. You're never going to get value from that, and you're likely not even going to be able to make it to the survivor in time after they use it. It's similar to an equally bad add-on of the same caliber, the Iridescent Pendant for Twins, which used to give a 12 second duration of Exposed after Victor was kicked when he was idle. Debatably an even worse add-on than this one. Both undoubtedly have a place here though, I think. One of the worst iridescent add-ons still in the game currently is the Iridescent Family Crest. This add-on reveals survivors within a 24 meter radius whenever you miss a demon strike, so when you're powered up and slammed the ground you make survivors around you scream. Terrible activation, partly because it's during your power time when you need to make the most out of it, and partly because it requires you to miss. Also during a slam you look at the ground for a long time, and you barely see the scream locations upon getting back up. Upon release this add-on was even even worse, with just a 12 meter range, which is very small, smaller than it sounds. I'm not too sure how this add-on hasn't been reworked yet, I'm honestly waiting for a full Oni add-on rework at this point, and I hope it happens eventually. Father's Glasses was an add-on you may not even recognize as iridescent, as it no longer is, replaced by the Kintsugi teacup. This add-on compared to Mother Daughter Ring, debatably the best add-on in the game, is pitiful. This add-on gave the effect of making trails of blood appear bright when phasing. This was really only useful in situations where survivors ran a perk like Lucky Break, or you struggled with tracking. After all, you have sound and scratch marks already, and so whilst this extra addition of tracking isn't terrible, it's certainly not iridescent, and might even be confusing in some cases, with it cluttering the screen. Black Box is an add-on that has gone through multiple different iterations, and all of them deserve a spot here to be honest. The current version acts as a small version of Blood Warden, and it's pretty terrible. It's a fun idea, and I don't want to criticise it for that, but its effect is still dreadful for an iridescent. However, it was worse back in the day, prior to its rework in 3.1.0. This add-on would make the obsession start the game in the dream world, and it would be impossible for the obsession to wake up for the duration of the match. Again, this is horrendously lacklustre, and will get you little to no value. Getting people to sleep isn't hard. This barely buffs you. It gets worse though. The 1.8.0 release version did this same effect, except the obsession could wake up. All the add-on did was start the obsession in the dream world, which can be undone with something as simple as a failed skill check. Truly dreadful. Hellshire Iron gives you the effect of undetectable after spearing someone. I would debate however that its old version was actually worse. In the PTB for Slinger, the add-on would reveal all survivor auras within Slinger's terror radius, so long as someone was speared. Back then he had a smaller terror radius of 24 meters. When you've got someone speared, you're pretty much locked into that view too, so you can't really look around to check your surroundings, making this add-on pretty worthless. It has the off chance to maybe reveal someone hiding, I guess. For whatever reason, this add-on was nerfed further upon the live release, and was given a 6 second cap for how long it could reveal auras before it stopped. I truly don't understand that nerf. This add-on is dreadful, I think, and I really don't get how it was nerfed when coming to life. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and let me know your thoughts on these add-ons too, down below. Thanks, and goodbye.